Muskeva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was limped over on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so, so that they fled out of uh, that house naked and wounded. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Father God in heaven, we solicit for your leadership in this discussion. May I decrease as we increase. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, sometime around nine, uh, 2000, uh, I think it was 2001 or 2000, um, when I was working for a certain organization in motor industry, I was uh, uh, going to work and uh, after <clears throat> uh, dropping off from the uh, from the bus that I used, public transport, I then walked to uh, my workplace. And um, when I was walking, I saw this young lady, uh, you know, coming towards me in the same way that I was uh, in. And um, I happened to uh, kind of know her from somewhere but I had forgotten where exactly uh, would I have met this young lady. But I was very sure that I, I, I know this lady. One, I had forgotten her name. Two, I was trying to uh, you know, remember where exactly um, did I meet this uh, young lady. And uh, you know how it is like when you, you meet somebody whom you are very sure that you know them, and you don't want just to pass them by, you know, you, you know our African culture. So I stopped here to greet her. And uh, to my surprise, of course, she, she stopped, but uh, she was kind of hesitant to greet me. You know, it was those times where we could shake hands. And I extended my hand to greet her, but she was very hesitant to take my hand and uh, I actually felt very embarrassed but uh, then she said hello and how are you? I said I'm fine and then I said but why do you seem not to, not to know me? She says but do I know you sir? And I said I think I know you very well and then she says but I can't remember you you know it's so embarrassing sometimes then I said look I know this lady and then uh, she, she then said, but where do you know me from? I said, I don't know, but I'm sure I know you. Uh, don't you go to church? She says, yes. And then I said, which church do you go to? And this, then she mentioned a different church from mine. And the fact that we was now speaking, you know, talking, chatting, I began to recognize even her voice. And I said, look, I know this voice from somewhere. Then I said, I then introduced myself and said, ah, no, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Then I said, wow, no, I'm sorry. And then he says, okay, what, what do you remember about me? I said, ah, I saw you on TV. She was a popular actress on a, a soap that was, uh, you know, featuring a national television. So obviously, she didn't know me. I knew her from a television station. You know, she could not recognize me because she never met me. We are told here of these sons of Skeva. They were sons of uh, a man of God, a chief priest. And uh, for those who know, Priests uh, uh, begot priests. In other words, these were also priests, seven of them. And we are told they 
uh, were exorcists. They would cast out demons and they were itinerant, meaning they were moving from one place to another, doing this business. But listen to what they said when they met this possessed uh, person with evil spirit. They said, we command you, right? You to come out, but through what? In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. You see now? And then these uh, uh, sons of Sceva are exercising the power of the name of Jesus, not Jesus they preached, but Jesus who was preached by Paul. In other words, they knew about Jesus through the preaching of Paul. Listen to what the, the evil spirit said through this man who was uh, possessed and then he, he answered and said jesus i know and the paul i know about but who are you in other words they are saying yes you talk about jesus i know about jesus and if you talk about paul I know about him, but who are you? In other words, they were like this TV actress who is saying to somebody who seemed to know, yeah, where do you know me from? We have never met. It's you who saw me on television, but I could not see you when you are seeing me. So I want us to go through the two I knows that we find in this verse. The first I know is that of Jesus. The evil spirit says, Jesus I know. And then the second I know is the Paul I know. And if you check in the original language, these two I knows are different uh, uh, from each other. Actually, they are, diff they are different words altogether. The English run short of words and they just put them as I know, I know. Actually, the word no has got three different uh, uh, words in Greek. The first one is oida, and we are not going to talk about that tonight. And the second one is ginosko. Don't worry about the names, but you just write them as they are even transliterated. Ginosko. And then the third one is epistemai. <coughs> epistemai. Epistemai. That's the third one. But from this passage of scripture, the Jesus I know is Jesus uh, uh, Ginosko, right? And then Paul Epist Epistamai. So we have got two words here, Jesus Ginosko and then Paul Epistamai. So what do they mean by Ginosko? This is what I'm going to uh, uh, unpack for you. Now, the term ginosko is uh, not just no, but is I know. It's, it's like a verb, I know. It's something that I, I, I have. But what is the definition of ginosko? Ginosko is, is defined as a personal, intimate, and experiential knowledge of something or someone, right? And then the knowledge has value to the one, I mean, the known has value to the one they know. In other words, when somebody says, uh, I ginosko, I know you, it means they have uh, a personal knowledge about that person. Number two, they have an experiential knowledge about that person. That, that person. Number three, they have an intimate knowledge about that person. This is very critical. In other words, when the Bible says, Jesus, I know, it is saying, I have lived with Jesus. I have experienced Jesus. I have actually uh, uh, have an encounter with Jesus. 
I know about Jesus, not from facial you know, knowledge, but I have an experiential knowledge about Jesus whom we are talking about. In other words, if I try to match you and the Jesus that I know, the mathematics does not, does not balance. Who are you as far as Jesus is concerned? You are not even part of, of the knowledge that I know about Christ. Where do you come in here between Jesus and me? Where are you coming from? Because I know Jesus. In other words, the evil spirit is saying, we have been together with this Jesus that you are talking about. I was there with him somewhere, and I experienced his, uh, uh, his character and his intimacy, his relationship. We were together somewhere. But where are you fitting in here? This is very critical. And then when you come to the second I know, this is Paul. Paul I know. Epistamai. Epistamai is, uh, 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 is a little bit different from Ginosko. Ginosko has to do with experience, has to do with personal, has to do with intimacy, has, has, has got to do with, uh, a, a, it's, a relational, it's a relational knowledge right it's not just the understanding of something but there is a relationship between these two who say they know each other okay though the relationship might uh, sometime seem to be uh, like in this case uh, the devil and christ the relationship has been strained or strained because of the rebellious uh, 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 the rebellion of satan but satan is saying I know him because we're together. I've experienced this Jesus you are talking about. So your, your characters, uh, he's talking to the sons of Sceva, your characters do not tally to the character of Jesus that I know. So where are you coming from? Where are you, you know, as far as Jesus is concerned? Now, well, let's come to the second Ginosko. I mean, the second I know, which is Epistamai. Epistamai now is a bit different from Ginosko, though it is some uh, a component of knowledge. But this one is uh, uh, comprehension, right? And then this has to do with acquaintance, right? Understanding, right? Put one's thoughts upon a thing. The main idea of epistemi is a thorough knowledge of facts, right? You see, it has to do with facts now, and often understanding. In other words, uh, this evil spirit is saying, Paul, I have a thorough knowledge of facts about Paul. <laughs> I know when he started the ministry of saving souls. I know where Paul came from. In other words, you can't talk about Paul and introduce Paul to me because I have his history. How he became a preacher. How he became one with Christ. So he is saying to these sons of Sceva, I know Paul as somebody who spoke on behalf of Jesus that they experienced some time. So where are you coming in? And also Epistemi says, the people that they should believe, you see, this is uh, Epistemi, people that they should believe in the one who, uh, whom come after him, that is Jesus. In other words, he's saying, I know the facts that Paul preached concerning Christ who was coming after him. In other words, Christ whom Paul preached and who was about to come, not just for the first time, but for the second time. So the evil spirits are the, this, discarding or dis, uh, discharging this uh, uh, notion of these sons of, of the chief priests saying, we don't know you. We know about Christ. We know about Paul because he was sent by Christ. In other words, you don't fit in in the economy 
of Christ and even of Paul. You are not part of salvation. Neither are you part of those that preach salvation. So in other words, you are not qualified to exhaust us. <laughs> this is very critical. You are not qualified. You don't have the power to tell us what to do because you are not of the other camp. I know Jesus because we had a fight. <laughs> this is what I think the, the evil spirits are saying. I experienced his power and I was expelled from heaven. And uh, I came here on earth and I met Paul preaching about this same Jesus. So I know about Christ. I know about Paul. But about you, I don't know. I, I, actually, the evil spirits are saying, who are you representing? <laughs> if you are not representing Christ and also representing Paul, therefore, it implies that you are not in their camp. There are only camps, by the way, two camps, by the way. There's the camp of Jesus and Paul. And there is the camp of Satan and his angels. Therefore, if you are not of the camp of the day of, of Jesus and Paul, then you are of the camp of the evil spirits. So you don't have qualification to do anything to me because you are under me. This is what the devil is saying. I don't take commands from people who, are, who do not belong to, to Jesus, neither to Paul. Those people should take, you know, uh, instructions from me. I am in control. As long as you do not belong to Jesus and you do not belong to Paul who preached about Jesus, then you do not have the right to tell me anything to do. Uh, you, you see what the, the devil is trying to tell us here. The devil fears those people who preach about Christ, uh, but also live according to what Christ is, says, is saying. But the devil does not fear people who talk about Christ, who is preached by someone else, whom they do not preach themselves. In other words, the, the, the devil is trying to tell us something that is very important. The devil does not fear the name of Jesus that comes from just the mouth, the lips. But the devil fears the name Jesus that is experienced by the person who talks about Jesus. In other words, tonight I'm trying to bring to attention that whenever we, uh, we, we meet, you know, evil spirits, they do not fear the name of Jesus as it were, just to mention it when we do not live according to the beatings of the name of Jesus. The evil spirits know those that are against them. And they know those that are for their care. And when we are not, you know, experiencing the love or the power or the gospel of Christ, the devil knows. You know, I went on to check the same, uh, uh, I know, in some... Uh, 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 passages of scripture and my eyes went to Matthew chapter 7 and verses 23 and the Bible says Jesus speaking you know about people who claimed to be his you see he says and then will I declare unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity you see the term I never knew you is the term ginosko. In other words, I have never had any experience with you. We never met. We have never had any intimacy, any intimate relationship with the Christ is the one that has been uh, denied here. And the Bible is, is using uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, negative uh, uh, term here. I never the term never is not just saying no, no. But it is saying not even at any time. You see? Actually, it's a double negation. 
I have, uh, we never met, just like this TV actress. I never met her. Of course, I saw her on television, but we did not have any relationship. We, we did not speak, you know, together because we were in different worlds altogether. In other words, when we have an experience with Jesus, when we know Jesus, we must have an intimate relationship with him. We must have a walk with him so that the devil can tell that these do not belong to me. I also went to the book of John, chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus. When he was praying, Jesus says in verse 3, This is eternal life, that they might know thee. You see, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life. In other words, knowledge of God, knowing God is here defined as eternal life. That they must gain no score. They must know you. They must have experience. They must have a walk with you. They, they must have a relationship with you. And if you read, uh, you know, Christ's Object Lessons, page 114, Ellen White says, the exper experimental knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, transforms men unto the image of God. Hallelujah. In other words, the knowledge of God must transform us. If we know God, it is to reflect in the behavior that we, 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 we have. In other words, our walking, our behavior, our characters must be changed by the knowledge of God. In other words, by beholding, we become changed. Will two men walk together if they are not agreeable? If you know Christ, if you experience Christ, you, our lives will never be the same again. So the devil will know because we would have been with Christ. No one has ever had um, uh, a meal with Jesus and never change. If we have an experience with Jesus, it will reflect even in our lives, even at, at work, at our workplaces, even in our families, the way we interact with other people, even at church, the way we speak, the way we dress, the way we even carry ourselves when there are no people that know us. It will reflect actually when, when Christ is in us, we cannot hide it. And then the second point that is very important is also found in um, the same book, Christ Object Lessons, page 69. This is what she says about the knowledge of Christ and the image of God. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Hallelujah. When the character of Jesus shall be perfectly, this is clearly reproduced in, the, uh, in his people, in us, then he will come to claim them as his own. In other words, the parousia, the coming of Jesus Christ, is preceded by the transformation of characters. And uh, the image of Christ being reflected in us so that we can be where, we, where Christ is. You, you know the story of Enoch. Enoch is said to have walked with, with God here on earth until his character was that of Christ. So God said, I will not... Uh, uh, allow you to stay here on earth when your character is, uh, is, that, is like that of those who stay in heaven. So Enoch was taken up to heaven. Why? Because he resembled the people who were in heaven. In other words, the character of Jesus must reflect in us so that Christ will see no reason where we should stay here because we will be resembling 
the heavenly kingdom or the heavenly family. So what have you learned tonight? We have learned that we need to know Jesus, not from a television, uh, you know, uh, performance. You know, sometimes you know Christ because he performs, because he has healed so and so, because he has provided food for, for somebody who was, who was starving, because he has come through, uh, you know, when I was uh, depressed. This is the only knowledge that we might know about Christ. In other words, Christ to us is just a, a great physician, full stop. Christ must be known in a holistic manner. He must be part of our life. And when we have this experiential knowledge of Jesus, then the Bible says we can be feared by the devil. And the devil knows that, uh, um, I mean, those that are from the other camp. So you have, you have heard that after uh, uh, speaking such to these uh, to, to these sons of Sceva, then uh, they were uh, overpowered by one man. Seven priests, so to speak, were overpowered by one man. Why? Because they had no uh, uh, they had no Christ in them. Jesus is the power of a Christian. He is the only one who can give us power to overcome whatever we go through in life. May this be our experience tonight that we know Christ, not from afar, but knowing from an experiential point of view. May Christ be known and he believed by us tonight. Shall we pray together? Father God in heaven, we exalt your name and magnify your name. We need to have a walk with you. We have known you from afar, but tonight we want to have a Gnosko. We want to have a closer walk with you so that even the devil will know that we don't belong to him. We are praying tonight for those who are not feeling well. Please, Father, heal them because they are yours. We want one day when everything is said and done, may our characters be transformed and you take us one day to the heavens up yonder. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.